I've worked in 35 countries around the world and some of them have been extraordinarily challenging. One of the projects that comes to mind is the Ignatia Highway in Greece, which runs from the west coast of Greece to the Turkish border. So it's about 680 kilometers. Uh, it has 72 tunnels and about 100 kilometers of tunneling. And these are twin highway tunnels, a double lane. Very, very challenging geology. Almost any geological combination you can think of on the way. So were that they, that was a very challenging project. Were they TBM and no, sequential they, they were they were all sequential excavation, all of them. Uh, there were no TBMs used on that project at all. A another one uh, that I wasn't involved in as a consultant but visited was the Almost Tunnel in Peru, which is a uh, maximum depth of 2,200 meters and straight across the Andes from one side to the other. So huge in situ stresses, uh, enormous rock bursts. And it was uh, awarded as a design, build, own, operate contract to the Brazilian contractor Odebrecht. Uh, and they pushed it through against enormous odds. And it was the most fascinating tunnel I've ever visited, with rock bursting almost all the way. Oh, enormous challenges. Every project is completely different. Uh, no two rock masses are the same. No two tunnels are the same. And so it really is a, a challenge from beginning to end in every project to figure out what particular combination of issues dominate that project. What I think uh, makes people like myself valuable is the experience we convey from one project to another. You have to adapt it in each case, obviously, because they're never the same. But you've seen things that, uh, what happens to rock under certain combinations of circumstances. And the biggest, pro the biggest challenge is figuring out what the problem is. There are, there are lots and lots of solutions. There are numerical programs that do all kinds of magic these days. But figuring out what the problem is is the biggest challenge of all. And so the best time for a consultant to come in is on day one. And they're almost redundant after that if they figured it out properly. When you're setting it up and trying to figure out where you're going, that's when you need the really experienced consultant. And after that, it, it doesn't become, it's not easy, it doesn't become routine. But if the project has been clearly defined, then the way ahead is much, much easier to negotiate. Super bright, uh, hugely talented in computing, uh, sometimes lacking a little bit in practical reality because uh, in the old days there tended to be much more uh, exposure during summer schools and, and uh, work, early work experience tended to be much more field oriented than it is now. And it was relatively easy for a young engineer to get a job on a site somewhere remote from, from anywhere and spend a few years there learning not only the technical aspects of the subject but how to deal with people, how to manage money, how to, to see the, the project through. And that's very difficult for young people to get today. So would that be the advice to young people? Well, absolutely. If, if uh, you know, I would say rather than doing a PhD straight out of school, go and get a job in the real world. Uh, and that's a little bit easier said than done, because jobs like that are difficult to come by. Keep up with a, with a discipline, read widely, visit other projects, try and keep up. And, and that's the kind of thing that we're trying to do and you're trying to do uh, in your educational program and I'm trying to do in mine, is to expose the whole range of, of professionals, not only young ones but the older ones, as to what other projects there are around the world. That's the motivation for me, is, is uh, really to try and educate, and to educate both academically and, and practically. Well, so why? the experience that, that people like myself have is something that is very difficult to convey, and you have to work very hard at it, but it's worth 
it's worth conveying. Why? Because ultimately tunneling is a very practical hands-on process. Uh, it's all very well doing calculations, but when you're in the tunnel, it doesn't actually work like the computer says it should. And so you've got to innovate, you've got to, you've got to uh, figure out day by day what the rock is telling you. People rely on you knowing that sort of stuff. That's right. And a, and a good tunneler will know what to do instinctively. Uh, if you had to go back and do it all over again, would you have changed your Not career? Not at all. Not no? at all. No. Why? Not at all. It's been a very rewarding, very challenging, uh, a, a very good career. Oh, absolutely. Wonderful. All over the world. Uh, in all, all sorts of places, all sorts of nationalities. Uh, there's a very strong uh, bond between all of us. Well, I studied mechanical engineering originally uh, at the University of Cape Town and uh, then uh, worked for the Scientific and Industrial Research Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in South Africa as a mechanical engineer. And in the early 60s, uh, we were approached by the mining industry in South Africa to help them with problems of rock stress at mines, mining at about three kilometers below surface, where the rock effectively implodes into the excavation. So we started treating it as, as a material, as you would concrete or steel. And that got me into rock mechanics in the first place. And uh, I then, in 1965, was invited to uh, London to uh, set up a new facility or a department, sub-department of rock mechanics at the Imperial College of Science and Technology. The only reference book in those days was a proceedings of a conference held in Denver, Colorado by the U.S. Geotechnical Society, I guess it was at the time, the first American rock mechanics conference, which was in about uh, 50... 62 or something like that. So, and that was about the only reference that, that we could read. There was a fair bit of German literature because they'd been working in the Alps for, for many years, but not much uh, English literature. Uh, I, I tried academia for nine years in London and, and really wanted to get back to the real world. So I went into consulting for 12 years. And then I had another, another crack at academia and the University of Toronto for six years. And then in uh, 1993, when I left there, I became independent. And I was independent until last year when I retired. And, uh, but throughout that process, even as a consultant, I was obviously men mentoring people and trying to educate clients and, and people. And, and now my aim is to, to really try and, and convey my experience there's, there's enough literature on fundamentals, uh, an abundance of it. There are lots of people now doing research in the field. But I have 50 years of experience, which I'm now trying to convey. I'm a, I'm a little bit remote from reality because I don't get to sight anymore. And that's, that's a, a challenge. But I think I've got enough information to last me the rest of my life anyway. Enough experience. <laughs> I hope so, yes. <laughs>